Today is Monday, May the 3rd. We're into a new month now, the month of May. I was reminded on Saturday, May the 1st, it came to my mind that uh, because it's May the 1st, I can go barefoot now. It's kind of a joke in my family because mother would not let us go barefooted until May the 1st. And now I can't stand to be barefooted. It's something uh, how when you're a child, you look forward to things like that. When you get older, uh, you don't want to do that. So I don't like being barefooted. Just a little trivia information for any of you out there. A um, couple of updates on different things in the body that have occurred over the weekend. Um, uh, many of you may know, but you may not know. Uh, Mike Willingham passed away, I think it was um, Thursday evening. Uh, he had, of course, you know, he had had a motorcycle accident a couple of years ago and was mostly bedridden. Since that time, after a long stay in the hospital, my understanding is he became septic and blood sugar count about 900, and he was found in his home by his grandson, Josh, uh, non-responsive. And so be praying for Hope Willingham, his daughter, and his grandsons, James and Josh. Don't know any of the arrangements yet, <clears throat> but as soon as we find out, we'll post them on our different social media platforms. And then Sue DeLong passed away on Friday morning. Um, she uh, had been going downhill hospice had been, so be, be praying for, uh, for James and, excuse me, for John. Uh, um, just a precious man, and so be praying for them. Today, Glenda Smith is having uh, her kidney removed. She, as a result of the accident they were in, they found that she had cancer on her kidneys, and so they're removing one of her kidneys. She went in this morning about 6 a.m., I think, to Rockdale Hospital, so be playing, praying for, for Glenda this morning as she goes through that surgery. Uh, yesterday was a great day. I had student takeover, and man, they did such a tremendous job in leading us in worship, and, and the testimonies were just so strong. It was great to hear uh, Benny uh, Petraeus share his testimony related to his father, Constantine, and be praying for Constantine. Uh, had his other chemo treatment, and things are going well, and so just continue to pray for a miracle there. Well, this morning, uh, I want to share something with you out of the book of Judges. Uh, last week, I was preparing for the BTCP class that I teach online on Thursdays uh, via Zoom. And we were in the book of Judges as we were going, we're going through the Old Testament right now, uh, book by book. And there was something that struck me at the beginning of the chapter and uh, uh, at the beginning of the book in chapter two. And uh, I wanted to share this yesterday because it was so appropriate to the day that we had yesterday. But <clears throat> I just kind of want to paint a picture of Israel's history. We know that Israel had gone into slavery in Egypt for 400 years, and God miraculously delivered them. And for 40 years, they wandered in the desert. Early on, after they had been set free from Egypt, they were really on the border, if you will, of entering into the promised land. But because of their lack of faith and their lack of trust, God uh, did not allow that generation who had come out of captivity in Egypt to enter into the promised land. And instead, they wandered in the desert for 40 years. And then Joshua, God raised up another generation after all of that generation had died out in the wilderness. And you remember, Moses was not even able to go into the promised land. I think one of the main reasons for that was that there was so much of Egypt in the children of Israel that God could not take that into the promised land. Uh, all their customs, the, the foreign gods that they worshiped while they were in captivity in Egypt, all of that was still in them. And God was gonna take the children of Israel as was promised to Abraham way back in Genesis chapter 12 and ratified in chapter 15 as Antoine shared that message yesterday morning. Um, they, the promise now is going to be begin to be fulfilled, and that was the promise of the promised land to take possession of that. They're on the eastern side of the Jordan, about to cross in, and God raised up the next generation of Joshua and Caleb, and Joshua and Caleb then took the children of Israel into the promised land. They divided the land according to tribes, 
and they were to go in and possess all the land and to subdue all of the other nations that were in the land. Well, we find in the recorded history that rather than fulfilling what God had commanded them to do, they, they took on wives of these other nations, and with the wives, they took on foreign gods. And so now we have Joshua's generation um, who, had, who were supposed to take the promised land, but did not fulfill all that God had commanded them to do, that generation now dies out. And so that's where we pick up in, in Judges chapter 2. Uh, Joshua had, had passed away at the ripe old age of 110. And then here's a startling verse, verse 10. He says, And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers. In other words, all of Joshua's generation now died. So we have the generation in the wilderness that died, the generation that enters into the promised land. They all die out, and here's the result. And there arose another generation. Now, this is the third generation we're talking about. And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord or the work that he had done in Israel. And I really thought about that. And you've heard me say over and over many times that the church, the body of Christ, is one generation away from extinction. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we find the command that God gives that, that the parents are to teach their children the ways of the Lord, to know Him as they walk and as they go. And the bottom line of this, guys, is that it is our responsibility as this generation the generation that I'm a part of, the generation that you are a part of. We call ourselves the baby boomer generation. And I like to think of it this way. We have had our day. We've had our time in the body of Christ where uh, where things were the way we wanted them, etc. cetera. Uh, we've had our day. Now it's time for you and I to pour into that next generation. I will hit 60 in October. Um, I think I'm probably coming on to third base if you look at life as a diamond. And the Lord has really put it on my heart that, that my responsibility in these latter years of my life is to do all I can to pour into that next generation so that they know the Lord and they know His ways. Um, God forbid that, that me and you as this generation forsake what God has called us to do. We've had our day. We've had our run, so to speak. I do not want to sit back on my laurels for the last 20 years, if the Lord lets me live that long, of my life, having it my way. The church is not Burger King, right? Have it your way. Um, but God has given us a responsibility to pour into that next generation. And however that might look is how the Lord leads you and I to do that. I'm, I'm so thankful that we have so many of our adults that, that work in our, our serve in our preschool ministry, loving on those little children, teaching them the truths of who God is so that they might know Him. We have a great group of, of adults that work with our, our elementary children in our children's ministry. We have, we have a small number, and we, we could certainly use more, that would help pour into that preteen years, um, those 6th, 7th grade years, 5th, 6th, 7th grade year kids, uh, and then our student ministry, and then our, our college and young adult age, career, college and career, we call them. Listen, I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you to look, ask the Lord, God, how can I serve? How can I pour into that next generation? It may be that God tells you, calls you to be an interceder, that you pray every day, pouring out, asking God to pour out his spirit on that next generation that they might come to know him. If you're an intercessor, make that a priority in your prayer. If you're a hands-on kind of person, Go to Antoine, go to Miss Vicky, go to Miss Lauren, say, how can I help serve in one of these areas so that I can have an impact on these kids? Uh, maybe there's a single mother that you know that has children in those ages. How can you come alongside to encourage her and help her in that way? Or a single father, how can you pour into those children? And I still believe without doubt that, uh, and statistics bear it out, that children who have a, a male and a female influence have the greater ability of success in life. 
And so um, it, it's incumbent on us to pour into that next generation, to yield my preferences to that next generation, uh, wh whatever fashion that might look at. Maybe it's that, as I do, I, 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 and I, I don't, I'm not holding myself up as an example, but I have young men that I disciple, that I meet with every single week, and I share life with them. I teach them the best way that I've learned how to follow Christ and be in his word and to be a man uh, that's a godly man. And by all means, I don't measure up to that fully. But part of that is sharing with them my failures as well. And so if it's, if it's that God would have you begin to take a step to pour into a young man, then then follow that. If it's a step that God's calling you to pour into a young woman, I know uh, many that, that are now coming into the choir ministry are of that next generation, and I'm so excited to see that. That's one of the benefits of having one service and all of our generations together. We have some young men and young ladies that are that are serving in that capacity of worship in that area. If you're a part of that, of that group, um, don't segregate yourself and sit with the older folks. Intermingle with those young uh, kids and adult members. I, listen, I can't, this is so on my heart. Here's why. Because it says here in verse 10 that they didn't know the Lord nor his ways. And then the result of that we find in verse 11. Uh, through verse 15, and here's the result of it. And the people of Israel did not uh, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and they served the Baals. They served other gods. Why? Because the previous generation had failed to teach them the ways and, 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 and the, the character and the nature and to show them how to follow after the Lord. The consequence was they went to serve other gods, and they abandoned the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went after other gods from among the gods of the peoples who were around them, and they bowed down to them, and they provoked the Lord to anger. They abandoned the Lord and served the bells of the Ashtaroth. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them over to plunderers, who plundered them, and he sold them into the hand of their surrounding enemies so that they could no longer withstand their enemies. Whenever they marched out, the land of the Lord was against them for harm, as the Lord had warned, and as the Lord had sworn to them, and they were in terrible distress. Um, guys, if we fail to do what is the responsibility that God has called us to do, then we're going to see the next generation suffer in the same hands that this generation of Israel. We find in the book of Judges that this cycle continued for six different judges, six different times over that period of history. Uh, they would forget the Lord. Some God would raise up a judge to usher in revival or spiritual awakening, and then it would fade out again because they continued to fail. If we're looking at this next generation and, and uh, shaking our head, and having uh, an attitude that sometimes I fall into and that's, you know, I criticize the next generation. Well, it's not their fault. It's our fault. Uh, if we have not done all that we can to try to bring them into a knowledge of the Lord, invest time in their lives. And I would say for us that are grandparents, the first place that we start is with our grandkids. Uh, but I find I have more time than just for my grandkids. There are other kids that, uh, that God has put in my life and in my path that I can have an influence on. So whatever it is that the Lord may call you to do in that, I just ask you to ask Him. Just pray the prayer. God, what is it that I can do uh, to, to invest in that next generation and respond uh, by following whatever He leads you to do? Take up thy cross and follow me. I heard my master sing. I give my life to ransom
last time, wherever you need to make it a prayer. follow. Be responsive. Be obedient. If God gives you an opportunity to plant a seed in somebody's heart, then depend on the Holy Spirit to open your mouth to plant that seed. If God shows you somebody where they've already had a seed planted, then boy, just be open to how the Spirit would lead you to help cultivate that seed in their heart. And if God, by His grace, would allow us to watch, to witness somebody be saved, then let's, let's, let's just celebrate because he is actively saving. Uh, the question is, are we being obedient uh, to, to be used by him in that? Uh, I want to encourage you, mark it on your calendar. This Wednesday night is our first and foremost. It's our time of corporate worship and corporate prayer. Um, if you're involved in any other thing, uh, then I encourage you to be here at 6 p.m. Uh, to pray and to worship the Lord. Uh, we, we cannot expect God to move if we don't call on him and ask him to change our hearts, to conform us to what his will and his way is. It's all by the hand of God. So let's be faithful and obedient to pray. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Have a great day.